Giannis was the founder of Kazaa along with Nicholas Enstrom, and uh, I think they changed the music business forever. So it's good to have you here. Thank you. One of the great things about peer-to-peer -peer is the ability to share bandwidth and to share the distribution of, of the load that it puts on the system. How exactly, I mean, in a, in a layman's terms, if you're doing the 30-second elevator pitch, how does peer-to-peer -peer work in, in that mode? Well, basically, it's very simple. In, you know, the, if, if, you, if you have to build an internet business, it has to scale. You need more and more computer power. Normally, you get servers, and everyone knows kind of you know, conceptually what a server is. Basically, you get one server, and it might sustain X number of users, maybe 1,000, maybe 10,000 users, and you have to keep buying and adding new servers. And with the peer-to-peer -peer network, every time, every time a new user joins in, they bring a server, so to speak. They bring their own computer, which takes part of the burden of distributing whatever it may be, whether it's telephony traffic in the case of Skype or files in the case of CASA, or in the case of Juiced, you know, video streams. Right. So out of, so out of CASA comes Skype, and Skype is embraced by people as, as one of the great utilitarian tools of this century. And so you are able to monetize it. You don't have the lawsuits. You're not dealing with rights issues. But you have the telcos who all of a sudden are like, well, wait a minute, where did these guys come from? What was that experience like? Well, you know, I'm sure, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting point you bring up because the good thing about Skype was we actually didn't, you know, there was, it was really difficult. There was no way to attack us from a legal angle because, you know, there was no copyright. I mean, people's private calls are not copyrighted, luckily, and, you know, so there was no, no, really, no real angle there. But I'm sure if the telcos would have been able to, obviously a lot of tel telcos, especially the one you know, whose business is dependent on selling, on selling you know, minute, per, by the minute telephony, right. you know, they would have loved to obviously quash something like this. You know, but they really couldn't because the, the, the ingredients were finally there. We have to remember voice over the internet wasn't new. It wasn't like we invented it. It had been like, there for, it'd been like you know, from 1996. Right. where the first things came out. But back then you had dial-up. When we came out with Skype, the timing was right because you had the ingredients that you needed. You needed to have broadband because you don't want to have to call the other person and say, dial-up to the internet and then we can talk online. That's just too cumbersome. Things have to be easy. Right. So you had enough broadband and you have computers that could handle it with microphones, etc. You know, the only thing people sometimes had to get was a small you know, $5 headset. Right. And that's why it could really take off. Now, later in Skype's development, you did add some music features. You added ringtones, you added uh, some caller ID tones and whatever. How did that, did that, was that successful for you? You know, I don't remember the data. I don't think that any of that was wildly successful, you know, and, and you know, but you have to experiment with these things. And, you know, ringtones has worked, you know, to some extent on, on mobile phones. So we thought we should certainly be having a virtual a phone company on the net, we should certainly experiment with some of these types of services as well. I don't think music was the one that was, you know, wildly successful. I'm sure some people, you know, used it. But what, I think were, the, what were the upsells that were successful? Because you do offer a lot of it. I mean, you offer free phone, but then you offer a lot of upsell add-ons, yeah. which is where the revenue comes from. Well, the main one, and I think still to this date, I mean, now I'm out of Skype having sold and everything and having wrapped up our arrangements with the company eBay who bought it, you know, a, a little bit less than half a year ago. But I think the things that really did well was the most basic service called Skype Out. Because it's very logical. You get Skype, you can make calls to other users um, on your computer, to their computers for free. But then in order to call a normal telephone, you, you buy this extra service. And that one was kind of a very, very natural extension of Skype, and that one actually took off. We launched that a year after we launched Skype, and that one took off really well and provided a good revenue base for the company. That's great. So about a year ago, we started hearing rumors about this thing called Juiced and the uh, Venice Project. And it, there were a lot of ideas about what it was going to be and what these guys were going to do next. So. Now that Juiced is out there, just for a moment, tell us first of all what it isn't, as we talked about earlier, and then let's talk about what it is. Yeah, well, in this context, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a pure music service. It's, an, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's a video TV service. In, in essence, you know, the ambition is to be a global kind of content, video content TV platform. So it's not, you know, a, a exclusively a music service. So, you know, you have, all, you have a lot of other great services, which is which is only for music, like you have Last FM, for instance, which is great. 
um, which actually we invested a little bit in. And then you have like iMeme and things like that. You know, Juiced is really a video service. But of course, for music content as well, a lot of it is audiovisual. And the audiovisual music content can do really well in Juiced because basically what you have at your disposal is, for the first time, a global kind of programmable, like you can do your programming. You decide what to put out, how to, you know, how to put it, how to, how to segment it, etc. You know, and so it works really well for things like music videos, but it can also work well for concerts and either live or, or not live concerts, etc. So how do I work? I, I want to work with Juiced. I have some music, I have some artists, or I, I've put together some, uh, an aggregation of content. How does someone work with you? So basically what you do is that you know, people contact us, and we have deals at this stage in terms of music companies. We have deals with you know, a whole range. You know, we have with Universal, we have with Warner, you know, but we also have with more kind of indies. We have with things like Netwerk and Beggars and you know, iConcerts and Music Nations and a whole range, a long list. Um, and for instance, also with Ministry of Sound. I love that channel. Yeah, Ministry of Sound is like performing really well, you know, and it's one of these things, you're like a small company. I don't think they're, you know, they have produced records and things, but their primary business is they have a great, they have this great brand which came out of having their clubs and everything. And they can suddenly get, you know, a globe, with these things that are happening on the internet, like Juiced, they can suddenly, you know, get a, become a, a broadcaster, so to speak, broadcast right. their own stuff and become, you know, get a global audience. So, so what, they are love the, what are some of the I'm sorry to mean to interrupt. What are some of the metrics around it, though? I mean, for instance, Ministry of Sound I know is very popular, and it's the one that I've gravitated to a yeah. lot. How many how many video views have there been? How many users are there? Are there some metrics you can share? Yeah. With so us? there's like you know there's been five million downloads um, of of views since like since we launched it, um, and with Ministry of Sound I don't remember exactly like how many views. But what happens is that they get reporting statements. So it's kind of it's not just like uploading something on the internet and you don't know what's going to happen. You get no money, you get no reporting statements. With this, actually, you, 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 know, you enter a very simple contract, you upload your stuff, you program your channels to do whatever you want, and then you get, first of all, the reporting statement, which shows you exactly how many views, in which regions, in which demographies, and all that. And then, and it, of course, you get money from, from it as well. But this is, you know... So how does, how does the advertising part of it work? What's my, re what's my rev share? I come to you and how do, how do I make money? I know how I get distribution. How do I make money? Yeah. Well, there's different rev shares, you know, but, but basically the way it works is that smaller companies who come to Juice, they don't want to sell their own advertising. So, so, th so they basically let us sell the advertising. And then we have, you know, people who, who sell advertising and, and make sure that it get put into the content in the right way. And larger companies like you know, large media companies, record labels, etc. They quite often they have an est established sales force. They want to sell their own advertising, and then you know the revenue shares kind of differ. But it can be it can be a 70-30 split, or it can be a 50-50 split. It depends on kind of who's doing what. So this is another great disruptor here. This is the potential somebody who was looking for distribution through a conventional television network or looking through for distribution through a Sky or a DirecTV or a cable service somewhere in the world can now come to you with, with long-form programming and get distribution. What, what's, the, what's the potential for, for making the concept of cable or satellite obsolete? Well, you know, things don't really become obsolete, but obviously what is happening is that the internet is, is creating this amazing resource where, you know, you don't have the scarcity of distribution. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And that o it opens up tremendous possibilities, you know, like, like, like Juiced and so on, like YouTube and, you know, anything that's happened over the internet over the last many years. So, you know, it's obviously going to change things. You know, it's not... It's not just going to immediately be like everyone is going to ditch their cable and, and, you know, and get used or anything like that because these things take a long time to build. This is, an, uh, this is a marketplace for legitimate content online, you know, long form, short form, but all advertising sponsored, you know, which is in its kind of very early days. And if you log into Juice now, there's by no means n enough content for you to say, okay, I'm going to ditch, you know, I'm going to ditch my, my Comcast subscription. It's not like that.